In this energy lesson, we're going to talk about three different types of heat transfer, convection, conduction, and radiation. Heat is a form of energy. And remember, we've been talking about energy and how it's always moving. And heat is no different. It's always moving. We use it for things like warming our homes, cooking our foods. Well, heat moves in three different ways, and it always moves from warm to the cooler region. And there's three ways it moves, conduction, convection, and radiation. If you look at this picture here, all three of them are shown in this pot heating up. Here we have the fire, that's radiation. The fire heats the pot, and then the liquid inside begins to heat up through convection. And as the pot heats up, it goes, moves down the handle and into the hand of the person. That's conduction. Remember when you were learning about physical and chemical properties, you learned that a metal is a good conductor of heat and electricity. Then we learned about insulators such as plastic in which heat or electricity does not move through well. So this cartoon is going to show you the two different ones and how heat, it affects heat transfer. Let's have a melting race. Place the frying pan and container upside down and next to each other. So here they have the metal and here's the plastic. Quickly put an ice cube on each. I win. Heat can flow through a metal in the ice cube, but the plastic doesn't allow it to flow so freely. So what happened was you put the ice cube on the metal and the plastic, and as you can see on the metal, it melted. So what happened was, since it's a good conductor of heat, the metal pan was warmer than the cold ice cube. So the heat moved from the pan into the ice cube, melting it. Whereas the plastic was had the same temperature as the metal frying pan, but since heat doesn't transfer through plastic very well, not much heat moved into the ice cube to help melt it. Conduction is one method of heat transfer. So if you look right here, we have our soup pot again. If we stirred a pan of this hot soup with this cold spoon, pretty soon that spoon's going to heat up. I'm sure everybody's put a spoon inside a hot pan, accidentally left it there, went to go pick it up, and it was too hot to pick up. So what's happening is the heat is being conducted from this hot area of the soup into the colder spoon. So it moved from hot to cold, and then it moved up through conduction, up the spoon to the tip of the spoon. So what's happening is these molecules are going really fast in the hot soup, and they bump into the colder spoon and because heat moves from hot to cold it gets all these molecules in here in the spoon that start to move faster and heat up which bump into the ones next to them and they start moving faster as they heat up and so on up the spoon until the whole spoon is warm okay look at this picture right here we have a metal pipe and we know everything is made up of atoms, so it's got all the atoms right here being shown. Here we have our heat source. So the metal pipe is being heated at this point. So what happens is that these atoms right here start to move faster as they're heated up. And as they start to move faster, they bump into the molecules next to them on either side and those molecules gain that kinetic energy and they move faster and they bump into the other ones that bump into the other ones and so on down the tube on both sides until this whole tube would be the same temperature. So heat is conducted through this solid as the atoms of the solid gain that kinetic energy and the temperature of the solid increases 
and they bump into each other until the whole metal tube through conduction is the same temperature. Another method of heat transfer is convection. If you look again at this soup pan, soup is being heated in the pan by convection. So what happens is the fire here heats the pan and then as the soup begins to heat up here, those molecules are going faster and faster and because they're going faster, they become less dense and they rise. As they rise, they become cooler. Now they become less dense and so they fall. And then they're heated up again, become less dense and rise. As they rise, they cool, become more dense and fall. And this keeps happening over and over and over inside the soup until the whole soup has the same temperature. If you notice here, the handle of the pot is made out of a plastic because it's an insulator. So the heat's not going to move from the pan or the pot into the handle. That's why they're made out of these so we can hold the pots while we're cooking. The wind we feel outside is often because of convection currents. So remember that the sun is beating down on the earth and the earth absorbs anywhere from 48 to 50 percent of it. So this air above the earth warms up and the molecules speed up and become less dense. As they become less dense, they rise up into the atmosphere where it's cooler. So the molecules get closer together, become more dense and start to fall. When they fall over the cooler water, it then replaces that warm air. It becomes over here. It heats back up from the land and becomes less dense and rises and so on and it sets up this whole convection current. Now at night the land gives up its heat quicker than the water does. So at night the water is warmer and so that air the molecules speed up, become less dense, rise, become cooler and as they become cooler they come closer together, they become more dense and they fall and it sets up a opposite convection current. So remember that the land will absorb that heat very quickly but it also releases the heat. Whereas water takes longer to heat up but once it has that warmth it's, it keeps it. It doesn't want to get rid of it so it slowly gets rid of it. That's why when we don't have as extreme temperatures as other parts of the country and we pre stay pretty mild because we live on the coast and we have the water that's keeping us warm. This picture here shows convection happening in a room with a radiator. So the warm air comes out of the radiator and all this hot air molecules are moving very quickly and as they expand they become less dense and they rise. And as it moves over to the other side of the room where it's cooler, they start to get closer together, become less dense and fall. Then as they fall, they get closer to the radiator where they heat up again, they expand, they become less dense, they rise, as they move to the other side of the room, the molecules slow down, they get closer together, they become more dense, and as they become more dense, it falls and it sets up this convection current in the room until what it's trying to do is reach that equilibrium where everything is the same temperature. So heat is always moving. Remember, heat is energy, and energy is always transferring from one type to the, another. Heat is a type of energy, and it's always moving from one area to another. The heat from the radiator, as these molecules are zooming around and becoming less dense, 
it moves throughout the whole room. So all of those warm molecules, as they're bouncing around, they're hitting the walls, the ceiling, and other objects in the room, the people in the room, heating everything up. Then the colder air is going to circulate back near the radiator, and it's going to heat up again, become less dense, and the whole cycle keeps going. And that warm air is transforming into transferring to everything else in that room. Conduction usually occurs in a solid or a liquid, whereas convection usually occurs in a liquid or a gas in out in the room around it. But radiation is um, comes through almost empty space. It comes from the sun, and most of space is a vacuum. So radiation doesn't need the molecules to move through. Uh, it can transfer the energy through this vacuum from the sun to the earth. So the sun rays travel in these straight lines called heat rays. We also call this radiation. Radiation is part of that electromagnetic spectrum from the sun heating the earth. When the sunlight hits the earth, that radiation is absorbed here. 49% is absorbed by the Earth's surface or is reflected back. Here showing you 5% is usually reflected back. The darker the surface, the more the radiation is going to be absorbed and lighter surfaces tend to reflect that radiation back. So if it's a really hot day, you want to wear a light colored shirt. And if it's cold, you want a dark colored shirt for the sun to absorb in you. So there are three types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Thanks.